Hey, this is Matt from William Henry, coming at you for the weekly installment of Shelter in Place, and a little bit more background and insight uh, into the, the culture and the fabric of William Henry. Um, quick note, uh, because it informs uh, the story for today. Uh, I grew up uh, mostly overseas. My dad worked uh, in embassies around the world, so I was a State Department brat. Uh, Iran before the revolution, going way back, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Malaysia, Korea, uh, traveled to many other places as well. So that was my, my upbringing, and I saw and admired art and craftsmanship and techniques from around the world just as, as sort of part of my childhood. And I think that informed how, how I evolved and approached uh, the William Henry story. Um, I wanted to design and build the best things I could possibly imagine, keep setting the bar higher for myself um, and all of us at William Henry. And if that meant it was me and my hands and my eyes or, or our shop in Oregon um, doing the work, then that's how we did it. Uh, if I saw something out there in the world, whether it was in Florida or somewhere else in Oregon or halfway around the world, that blew my mind and I thought that artistry, that technique, that integrity would elevate William Henry's product um, and my design ideas, then I wanted to use that um, because I simply wanted to deliver the best thing I could figure out how to do. Um, so one of the earliest connections I made that goes on to this day uh, goes back to about a year into William Henry. I was at a little knife show. <sighs> maybe had one employee at that point so it was maybe it was it was really single authorship at that level or maybe me and an apprentice uh, but I was at a little, little knife show and there was a Japanese knife maker about two tables over his name was Kojihara a fantastic fantastic knife maker uh, just beautiful work and he was admiring my designs and I was in love with the craftsmanship and, t and uh, technique he had he was giving me pointers on how to finish my blades better, and I was taking notes and listening very carefully because his blade grinds and finishing were just spectacular, far above what I'd figured out how to do. And I was admiring it, sort of wistfully. And he said, well, I was trained by a master knife maker in Seiki City, Japan, which is where Koji was from. And um, I could introduce you to him. And I said, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please. And uh, he introduced me to Kikuo Matsuda, as Kiku to his friends, um, through a translator. Kiku's lineage is he's a seventh generation knife maker. Uh, uh, his great 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 grandfather, going back far enough, was one of the master smiths making some of the earliest and most extraordinary samurai swords, which were originally made in Seiki City, Japan. And uh, over the years and generations that evolved into a sort of a cottage industry in Seiki of amazing knife making uh, at all levels and Kiku is part of that history. So Kiku did fantastic knife work, fantastic blade grinding and over six months I developed a relationship with him where I was able to uh, buy my steel and laser and water jet cut and surface grind and CNC machine all of these precision aspects that I needed in my blade blank to be able to produce a William Henry pocket knife but then package those blade blanks up send them across the Pacific to Kiku where Kiku uh, and now his son-in-law as well uh, hand ground and polish the bevels and the flats of the blades uh, in this sort of generations old traditional way and the, the work was just gorgeous and to this day 22 years later Kiku still does a wide range of William Henry's blades we make the blades we send them across the Pacific it takes a long time but Kiku and his son-in-law hand polish the bevels and the flats and and the, the work and the artistry and the integrity and the nuance and the transitions between the flats and the arcs and the grinds and the polishes the edge geometry, it's just extraordinary. And I'm so proud of his work. I'm so proud of being able to bring that to um, the William Henry story and to the William Henry product. And it's part of the nuance that maybe you get uh, as a fan or as a collector, maybe you don't, but it is, 
it is part of what makes William Henry William Henry. And um, I will go wherever I have to go in the world to get the very best work, to bring the very best craftsmanship and the best uh, history and technique and artisanship to what I consider sort of a canvas, which is the, the core design uh, that I execute for William Henry. And uh, it's part of what makes us us. Um, you know, some of our stuff is 100% made in the United States. Some of our stuff is 100% made right in our jewelry studio or in our knife shop in, uh, in Oregon. And some of it requires a much larger global dance. Um, and that's a global dance that we've spent, or a global network that we've spent over two decades developing and we continue um, to develop. And it's part of what makes us us. It's part of how William Henry stands out in a world full of, you know, really amazing and not so amazing products um, and so there's a little a little backstory about Kiku um, and uh, over time I'll, I'll occasionally touch on on other partnerships that we've developed that just are profound in terms of what makes William Henry William Henry so enough said thank you for listening have a great weekend